Okay, I'm just jumping in for a second because in the following clip, I say, I pronounce the word uh, fungi wrong. So please ignore me every time I say fungi. Um, it's fungi, fungi. I'm just gonna turn that off for a second because it's kind of loud, but I'm so geek right now. I have wanted to make compost tea for a long time and I just, I. I just have never found the time or put the time and effort into it. It's actually not that complicated. Um, there's tons of um, YouTube videos and articles on the internet if you really wanted to dive into the reasons for making it and how to make it and the different ways you can make it. Um, but I'll just give you the simple version here. Um, I finally have my own worm poop. I have um, a worm bin in my basement. I'll, I'll introduce you to my worm friends uh, another time, but I put um, some of the vermicastings, um, the worm poop in this bag. This is like just a, a bag that you get at a paint store that painters use to sift their paint kind of, or I don't know what the word is, but they put it in a five gallon bucket and get the lumps out. Um, so it works great for like a tea bag for your compost or your vermicompost here. So I put that in there and then I used water that I had let sit out overnight. Um, my water was probably a little bit dirty, but it didn't have any chlorine or bleach in it. I just don't want anything that's gonna kill my bacteria and fungi in here. So it, it had sat for a day, so all of that evaporated. Um, and then I just squished it around to get loosen up as much um, microorganisms as I could in the water here. So that's all I did initially. And then I added in um, food. So from what I understand, this is all food that feeds the fungi um, that has come off my um, worm poop. So I have um, humic acid and I'd use a tablespoon of that, um, a tablespoon of kelp and a tablespoon of, this is fish um, hydrolysate, uh, super stinky. From what I understand, it's just basically fish all parts of fish ground up. Um, it, it really stinks, actually the whole garage stinks right now. But the fish hydrolysate feeds the fungi as well as it will also feed the bacteria. Um, you can add other things um, and other things to feed the bacteria, but from what I, I've read, I don't, I'm not too concerned about feeding the bacteria. I really wanna feed the fungi. Um, so what, kind of what stopped me from making the tea is I just never got a pump. You just need a little pump. I don't even know what size this is. Um, I just seen someone on the online, a couple people had said to get this pump. So um, I just got what they suggested. Um, I got some quarter inch hose. I did put a fork. I seen someone put a fork on the bottom to keep it at the bottom of your pail and keep the hoses down there because you want the, um, you want the, all the water oxygenated. You want the air bubbling throughout it all. So I put that all together, mixed everything up, and then I'm just going to brew this for, um, it sounds like the time is about 24 hours, the peak-ish time. If you have a microscope, you can actually look at what you have and kind of know more exactly when you should stop brewing. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna do it just under 24 hours because it's better to underbrew than overbrew. Um, and I wanna spray tomorrow morning before it gets hot. So I'm just gonna do, make it today and then spray early tomorrow morning. So it'll be a little bit less than 24 hours. Um, yeah, so you just bubble it. And that's all it is. I don't know why I didn't make this years ago. Um, it's basically what I'm doing is I'm taking the the microbiology from that comp, that um, worm poop and exponentially growing it in here. So I'm feeding it and it's just multiplying and then I'm going to spray it on top of my, I really want to treat my lizzies and my dahlias. They tend to get bugs and um, the dahlias more so the bugs and the lizzies get fungus diseases and I just want them to be as healthy as possible. I want um, them to have all the tools they need to be healthy, lush, and not tasty to the bugs and um, the fungi out there. So yeah, this is what we're trying. Um, I think it, the plants will like it. I hope they do. It's super fun to make. I love trying new things.
So I got my uh, all my dahlias, all my lizzie sprayed. I even had enough to do some of the other plants like the eucalyptus and the raspberries. Yeah, um, I'm always surprised to spray a tank. Um, almost takes me an hour. It probably took me a bit more because I reloaded. Um, but one benefit of walking your field, which my goal was to spray every week something, some amendment, something I made, um, and I haven't been very good at this, that this year. But the benefit of doing that, not just for the plants, but just gives me a chance to slowly walk over all my rows and to see um, where there's problems, what's looking good. Um, so what I did notice is that I think the weeds are winning the battle this year. We, uh, I, there's a lot of weeds and they seem to be growing like crazy right now. I can't seem to get on top of them. So um, I think that's what I'll be working on again today is weeding. Okay, so I'm not doing a ton of designer orders this month. Um, June is busy, and then usually when lisianthus kick in and the dahlias, um, like so August and September, I do more florist designer orders. But um, this week we put together uh, white and green. Um, and then I have, I think the next pickup is more of a wildflower look, but it's always fun to see my flowers when they're color schemed, when I put the orders together. I just think it's so fun. But I'm showing you because, well, look at this. This is my first Lizzie's. I cut a few stems last week. I, and I can't remember what variety this is. Um, I have to look it up. I, I don't know if it's in my trial patch or not. But the Lizzie's are just ready. Like the, the first bloom I pinched out and then this is the next round. This variety has smaller blooms on it, but look at that stem. There's quite a few on there. So I actually usually like to wait one more round and then you get like tons of blooms, but I think this will work for her. So excited. I, I love Lysianthus. I'm just I'm super anxious to start harvesting lots. And um, the other reason I'm showing you this is because I don't know if you remember, I don't know what week that was. Um, I planted flocks and I'm trying some new varieties. So I planted um, two well, this is like a white one and this one's a little bit more like whitish, but it's actually a little bit more of a green tinge to it. Those two. Um, I'm loving them though. They're like not super long, but the flocks that, um, I think the designer's here. Yes, and my, I forgot to put my dogs away. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, I think um, next year they might be taller, but I just love flocks. I am addicted to growing flocks. Yeah, I'm just trying really hard to get this these rows weeded before the end of the week. Um, the grass weeds that are in here are growing super fast, and so are the lisianthus now. Um, but they're big. There's not as many weeds in here. It looks worse than it is. They're just big. Um, so it's, it's it's quite enjoyable actually. The weed I'm enjoying myself. Uh, it partly because I'm trying out a new tool. Uh, Jay and Heather from Feeder Flower Farm suggested I try the. I think. Um, I think it's called the Bandit Loop Weeder. Because uh, I, Jay had heard what I said about this one and that I wanted something that was sharper. This is sharper, it, it works great. Um, it's nice to slice out the little weeds and it fits, like the width is great for fitting in between the plants. So I'm really happy with it. It was a great suggestion. So um, yeah, the Lysianthus are looking good. There's quite a variation in size and I have some, over there that are rosetting, meaning they're just popping out leaves along the bottom and they're not actually lengthening and sending a stem up. So, and they probably won't do that. Um, all of that is because I planted them probably when it was too warm, uh, the rosetting for sure. Um, and some of the variation in sizes, they might've just been root bound because I didn't plant them in April when I should have um, because of the cutworm. So some of them will grow out of it. Some will still get a lot bigger, but we do have color coming. So this is exciting. 
yeah, so the weeding has been the weeding has been very enjoyable. Um, also because it was mainly cloud cover. The sun just came out, and it is a warm sun. It has been a hot and humid week here. Um, so yeah, a lot a lot of sticky weather. Market was very hot and humid. It's really hot. <laughs> Actually, it's not that bad when you're in the shade. But it's hot. Yeah, I wasn't sure what it was going to be like because of the forecast, because it was not only the heat warning, but there was also a chance of rain. And it was a holiday. It is a holiday weekend coming up, and that all makes a difference in how many people come to market. So it was very slow at the beginning of market, but the rain um, didn't hit market. It was just outside of market, but we could hear the thunder and see the dark clouds, um, but it, it stayed where it was. Um, so it was nice not to get rained on um, and the sales did pick up my the end of market so that was that was good it was an okay night um, i was happy with what we did considering um, the forecast and the weather conditions so yeah okay i'm just gonna g keep up with the weeding here so i can get this done this week but i just want to say thanks again for hanging out with me and hope you can join us again next week mm -hmm.